Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a So You Want to Play Tatars and it's been a long time since I've done one of these episodes so it's good to be back and Tatars has been requested quite a lot. If you guys are new to the series I highly recommend you check out some of my previous episodes. We basically pick a civilization and go into an in-depth dive about it both from a theoretical standpoint and from a practical standpoint in game and on the tech tree pretty much. And uh, I'm going to be going through the tech tree first, talking about how you should play it. And then I've got a recorded game that I just played on stream today that I will be reviewing with Capture Age and uh, sharing my thoughts on the game and the civilization and how I think it should be played best. Uh, but without further ado, let's hop into it and take a look at the tech tree. So Tatars are described as a cavalry archer civilization. We'll go through their bonuses here. Villagers gather plus 50% food from herdables. Um, and that just means sheep that does not include boar and deer. Um, so sheep, goats, cows, etc. Uh, new town centers spawn two sheep starting in the castle age. Small eco bonus there. Not the best to be honest, but not the worst. Units deal plus 25% damage when fighting from higher elevation. So basically doubles the damage you deal from higher ground like hills. And then you get thumb ring, part and taxes for free, which is probably their best bonus and probably one of the best military bonuses in the game to be honest. The thumb ring spike is absolutely incredible with the archer play. And it's pretty much something that you should make, you know, take advantage of the Tars like every single Arabia game possible. Take advantage of the free thumbing by going Cav Archers or Crossbows and Castleage in some way, shape, or form. And unique unit is the Keshik, which is basically just a tanky cavalry unit that regenerates gold when it attacks. And the Flaming Camel, which is a Petard. I will talk about that later. The unique techs are Silk Armor and Castleage, giving their Light Cav, Step Lancers, and Cav Archers plus one. Pierce armor and melee armor, and then they have Timur Siegecraft in the Imperial Age, giving Trebuchets plus two range, and it gives them Flaming Camel access. Their team bonus is that Cavalry Archers have plus two line of sight, which isn't really the best team bonus in the world. Uh, it's pretty irrelevant, in fact, in most cases, I suppose. Uh, but it could help out if you're going to CA, I suppose, in Castle Age, for example, for raiding. All right, let's take a look at the tech tree, though. First thing we'll notice is they're missing Arbalest. So right away, going crossbows with them means that it's going to be an awkward transition to Imperial Age unless we transition to, like, Heavy Cow Archer or something like that. Uh, these can they have just fine. Hand can they have just fine as well. Good Eagle counter there. Uh, as far as their barracks, it's pretty terrible. Only up to 200 swordsmen. No supplies. Do get Halberdier, though, but we'll see the weakness there with the halibus once we get to the blacksmith. Uh, stable, you have Hussar fully upgraded. Cavalier plus a unique tech, don't forget. Cavalier is there, heavy camels there, and elite step lancer, so it's solid stable options there for sure. Siege workshop, your best tool is the siege ram. No bomber cannon, which is definitely notable, and heavy scorpion honor is used in certain cases. Uh, and then going for the blacksmith here, so you're missing, uh, the only Steve in the game to be missing chain mail armor as well, so infantry is terrible. That being said, don't be afraid of going halberdier to counter um, like cavalry units, especially like camels, because halberdier, even if they're missing armor, are still gonna be insane versus cav. Just be careful not to go like two hundred swordsmen like ever, pretty much, and um, and don't go halberdier if your opponent has a lot of like arbalest on the field. Find a better solution to cavalry in that case. But if it's just cavalry, halberdier are still fine. All right, moving on to their water here. Um, nothing too crazy, <clears throat> missing ship, shipwright, but the rest is fine, no heavy demo as well. Um, university, one thing to note is that they have siege engineers, which is good for the trebs, and other siege weapons, but not bomber cannons, they don't have it, no keep, and uh, they do get bomber tower, which is very nice as well, so bomber tower is a nice late game option, potential with the tars, and then for their castle, uh, Keshek costs 60 food, 40 gold. Keshek is actually insane. It has three pierce armor when it's upgraded to elite and with all the armor, it's three base pierce armor plus four. So you have seven, which is the equivalent of a fully upgraded paladin. So against archer units, Keshek is a fantastic option. Keshek plus like skirms to counter halves is a great composition. And Keshek, he Keshek plus heavy cover archer is the best composition they can get to if you have infinite gold. If you can't have infinite gold, the best composition is heavy cover archer and Hussar um, was, you know, pausing for anticipation there. Maybe you guys didn't expect it. Uh, and then Flaming Camel is just a strong, it's like a Petar that has attack bonus with cavalry, but it's pretty useless in most cases. Uh, and then the siege weapon that's the best is Timurid Siegecraft, which is like giving the trebuchet plus two range. Combine that with Siege Engineers, you have like 19 range trebs, which is like really, really strong. This is their best late game siege option. The Monks is pretty bad though. They don't have Sanctity, no Redemption. So like the rest of it is pretty useless. Block printing is okay and atonement's fine in certain cases. Herbal medicine to heal up your units and castles. And as far as eco upgrades, 
nothing crazy, missing two, two men saw, and the rest is pretty irrelevant. So, uh, pretty pretty good stuff there. Just to kind of summarize, heavy Kavarcher is your best option, but the crossbow spike in Castle is very good. Cavalry is good across the board. Hisar is amazing late game. Keshek amazing late game. And pretty flexible despite missing uh, Bombard Cannon. And as far as where they're the most weak, I think that they don't have a consistent eco bonus. So they're the most weak going like all in castle or all in feudal. They really want to make use of like the early castle spike to gain an advantage and then get the Imperial Age to make use of the free Barthen tactics and their great late game. That's how I see them being played in theory. But in all in castle situations, they can still be okay, but they're definitely not like the best situation for all in castle, okay? So try to avoid that as much as possible. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and go for the replay that I have set up here. Fantastic. So, hair versus Kazva. We're gonna be casting this with Capture Rage and just going over the recorded game and seeing what I could have done better, what I did well, what Kazva did well, what he could have done better, and most importantly, how to play the Taurus in a practical sense. So, starting off in uh, in the top of the map, I guess, in the north uh, northeast of the map, I guess you can say, uh, it's me playing in blue as the, the Taurus, obviously. Kazva's in the south of the map, playing in red as the Byzantine. So, Byzantine is not the best Arabia Civ, but it's definitely not a bad Civ in of its own right. Has a lot of tools to its disposal, especially the cheap trash units. Kazva's map is pretty good, he's got back gold, uh, he's got two stones that are pretty safe and a bunch of woodlands that he can make use of and all of them are in pretty reasonable location. Front of the map is very open though as most Arabia games tend to be these days. And um, yeah, the barriers on the top is definitely, uh, you know, definitely susceptible to some early pressure as well because it is like on the front and at the bottom of a hill. Uh, but yeah, nothing too crazy there. Secondary golds are quite far as well. So if I can pressure him and keep him away from the gold, can be pretty good. My map is also kind of similar. I've got pretty good woodlands at the back. All of them are in decent locations. Stone is pretty safe, but the main gold, the big difference here is the main gold sucks for me. It's on the front and it's kind of near a couple of hills. So terrible main gold. Berries are a bit better though for me though. They're on the front, but they're pretty close to the town center and away from the hills. And then secondary golds, I've got one here and one, well, that's an extra gold to the left. And that's my third gold. Look how far that is on the new Arabia. Holy moly, uh, third gold way out there. So. Pretty interesting situation map-wise. We both have decent maps, not amazing, not terrible. Um, and we'll see how it plays out here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and fast forward the Dark Age a little bit just because it's not too, too interesting. Um, but you will see, I actually make some some small mistakes here. The boar runs back. I was trying to lure a deer. Boar runs back, ends up getting stuck. Oh no, he didn't get, yeah, he got stuck because he got hit. Uh, at the gold, and bring him back in. I messed up the boiler and you know, it's embarrassing, but uh, these things happen, and I'm sure they happen to you guys uh, as well. Happens to everyone from time to time. Uh, so, yeah, I just, it's, it's the kind of thing where it's like, don't feel like you have to play perfectly every game to, like, win in Age of Empires. Like, we often stress about, like, efficiency and stuff, but, like, this kind of inefficiency sucks and it looks bad, but it loses you, like, realistically, like, 40, 50 food tops uh, in terms of, like, worker efficiency of them walking and stuff, and then the board the like the king i probably less than 40 50 realistically but like i said tops you're losing 40 50 food there which is definitely something that you can recover from um looks like kaz was going for a barracks and i'm going to keep an eye on, on my scouting specifically here um because my scouting is very important here so i see this i see the barracks here and i wasn't really sure what to go for and i'm going to be honest with you guys i was kind of keeping it up to uh i guess uh, you know up to whatever I felt like going for in the, in the how, how do I want to say this? I, I kept it I kept it open. I was ready to adapt and ready to do any strategy that I felt like would be good. And I decided to go Men at Arms because I saw that he had forward berries and I saw that he would probably be going Men at Arms as well uh, with the barracks on the hill and that barracks timing as well. And so, yeah, so one thing I'll talk about here this chat reminded me is why not Scouts vs Byzantine? The reason why Scouts vs Byzantine kind of sucks is that it kind of plays into their cheap trash really well. They can just go few spearmen to defend against the Scouts, wall up with their higher HP walls that you'll never break with Scouts. Uh, and then they can transition to skirmishers if you, trans if you try to transition to skirms. And then they have cheap trash that they can pressure you with. And it's super annoying to deal with skirm plus, uh, plus spears when you have just Scouts and then make transition to skirms late. So. I don't like playing Scouts with Byzantine for that reason. It plays too much into their cheap trash tech. I'd rather go Men at Arms to force them into range option right away, and I play range as well. Because then if they go Skirms, I go Archers, and then I go Scouts, and all of a sudden I've got 
archers and scouts, which is much better against uh, against skirm spear than skirm scout. If that makes sense. So that's kind of the reason I don't like to play uh, scouts versus Byzantine. But it's not like a rule. It's just my personal preference. Uh, I try to surprise the scout here, but it actually ends up being a terrible mistake. And I should have known better because I actually knew he was doing men at arms because of the barracks timing. But my scout was in the middle of nowhere. And I tr decided to fight, you know, <coughs> before I can actually hit Feudal Age and before my scout was there. So I take a bad trade. How do I adapt from that? I just run away. I try to get men at arm here. I end up canceling it because I see him chasing me. And I figure, let him chase me. I don't care. I'm preparing range unit behind it with a range coming up. And even if he survives with militia, I can just defend it with my archer. So no problem. I die for a scout here. I really want to kill his scout. Uh, at all costs, I don't care throwing all my militia for that because the scout is the best tool out of these units. So if I can kill the scout, the three militia will die to archers no matter what. But the scouts can, can kind of continue to survive and run away. <clears throat> Alright, pick up the scout there. The militia are pretty useless. Behind this one, Kaz was full walling and going for a range of his own. Which, like I said, is totally fine. If he wants to go scrim here, I'm okay with that. I go archers, clear up the militia, and I was, you know, I, I even said during, during the live commentary, I'm absolutely ready to make a stable here and play archers and scouts against his skirmishers. Like, I'm no problem whatsoever with that. Uh, Tatar can play that very well. But I do want to play range units with Tataras because, like I said, you want to make use of the thumb ring at all costs. Like, like you need to have a great reason to not be playing range units. That's not a skirmisher, so crossbow, um, <coughs> crossbow or cav archers in early castle age. But you have to have a really good reason to not be playing either of those. Um, and in most cases, you will not have that reason. So in this case, again, I have no excuse not to be playing range within castle. Even if my opponent has cheap skirmishers, which he does, you still play crossbow, and then all you all you do differently is add siege or you add knights in castle age. That's the only thing different you do. But you still open crossbows. Don't be afraid of the cheap skirms in this matchup. Because that free thumbing is just, again, like I said, way too good to pass up. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to be clearing out the militia. I see the fact that he's walled with my militia at the front. Uh, we can take a look at what I see here. Just kind of looking around his base. I see quite a bit of you know his map. And I kind of know what he's up to. I see the range. Um, and I know he's walled. So all I do is I fully wall. I wait till I'm fully walled before moving out. Playing it very safe. And I've cleared up his militia. So there's no problems there whatsoever. And I'm using my scout to just scout the map as well. That's the one benefit of having my scout survive, is the fact that I can do some extra scouting with that guy. Sorry, my throat is bothering me a little bit. All right, so nothing much is happening here. We can definitely fast forward here. Uh, he's gonna be massing some skirms in a second here. I move out with some archers, by the way. But I decide, the reason why I decide not to, this is important actually, the reason why I decide not to stick outside his walls and put pressure is literally just because I know he has potential of scrims because he's Byzantine and I know I saw the range. So I don't want to show my archers here unless I can break in. So what I do is I look for holes, I check to see if I can do damage, I realize I can't really do any damage, and I don't even get fletching. But don't make the mistake of showing your archers sitting outside the wall because then he can just bring the scrims out and then trap you and you lose four archers for free. So I didn't make that mistake. I go back. No reason to lose his archers and we're good. So that's like the one comment I want to do. Otherwise, we're both walled. He's going scrims. I'm going archers. And I pretty much in a blind add a stable here <coughs> on the whip to castle age. I was debating. Either you add a second range and you go extra crossbows. But against Byzantine that made a range, like 90% chance that he's got skirmishers set up 90% chance so I go back to regular speed here uh, and so I go for the stable blind well not blind I know he's got a range but I don't know he's got skirmishers now um, but uh, yeah I'm just gonna go with stable because it's just so logical in this matchup he's gonna get the cast age first probably because he didn't invest too much into feudal age uh, I felt like I kind of invested more with archers coming out earlier going to gold earlier he kind of just went like no units full wall and then only made the scrims afterwards but that earlier castle age doesn't really necessarily mean too much. Idle TC for both of us is pretty negligible. And yeah, now I know he's got skirms. The one thing is I don't want to be too too much on the map with these four archers. This is actually a mistake right here. Uh, I'm moving out with these guys, but that makes no sense. I just see the skirms now. That makes no sense. Uh, my scout blocks here as well. I should have just scouted with my scout. 
And had I done that, I would have actually saved two archers and I wouldn't have to waste my scouts. I had to waste my scout to save those two archers, which I thought was worth it. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely a big mistake for me, losing two archers for free. He's gonna be pressuring me. He knows I got a forward gold. He knows I'm not yet <laughs> in the castle age, excuse me. And because of this am amount of pressure he's sending, like I saw like the amount of scrims he had, I just have to add a second stable. It's logical if your opponent has skirmishes to make knights, but between one stable and two stable, there's definitely a lot of things that can go differently. But the reason I committed onto two stable is just because I have forward gold, I'm later to castle age, and I saw how much scrims he had. So I had to go second stable in order to stay safe and not make sure I don't die, basically. I'm getting my eco upgrades at the same time. He's doing the same. And he's got some spears and skirms here. Now the thing about the Byzantines, and this is something you have to understand once and for all. Once you hear it, you, you'll understand and you'll probably agree with me as well. Is that double trash units will always lose to double gold unit. No matter, like, double trash unit is not countering double gold unit at all. Crossbows counter the spearmen better than skirmishers counter the crossbows. And knights counter the skirmishers better than the pikemen counter the knights. And you'll see it right here, what I'm saying in practice right, right now. I'm using the crossbows here to pick off the, the spearmen and they die in like two shots of the crossbow, like, like five shots. So five crossbows all landing on the spear and it dies. And then the knights can never die to skirmishers. So all I have to do here is just make sure I'm targeting the right units with my crossbows. Knights will finish off the skirm and clinch the skirms if ever needed. And I end up surviving that pretty aggressive move from him. Uh, in good fashion. So behind this he's one TC, which I don't know. He's only adding the second TC now. And for me, I'm I think adding the second TC soon as well. So I focused, we both focus on the aggression and the units, and we and both then add TCs afterwards. Alright, so now I've got some knights out. I've got my crossbows from only one range, again two stables, but I continue making crossbows. And the reason I continue making crossbows is because I don't want to give Byzantines a chance to do double trash unit and counter me. I don't want to have pikemen to counter my knights. Double gold unit completely counters Byzantine. And like I said, it's the best strategy to do against them. They, they, they don't have an answer to it besides like Skirm Camel or something like that that can play against crossbow knights. They don't have a counter to this. So um, it's the best way to play against them. Their best counter is to do like just crossbows themselves. But Byzantine players almost always want to make use of the cheap trash. So they rarely just go for pure crossbow. And then if you see them doing pure crossbow, you just go cross with the Taurus and you have free thumb ring. That's like insane. So, an insane advantage. So, no matter what he did, basically, I was going to have the advantage in this matchup. And so, yeah, the reason I don't go CA here is simply because, <coughs> excuse me, I had to, to commit to two stables and I couldn't commit to multiple ranges. I just, I didn't have the resources early. So, I can't go Cav Archers now. And if you're ever in a situation where you don't have a lot of production, don't do Cav Archers. Um, unless you need the mobility. And in this case, I don't really need the mobility. I'd much rather have a unit that I can, that's very accurate, that I can micro against the spearmen. That's the, that's the use of these crossbows. All right, now we see him reacting with double stable because he needs to kind of defend against the onslaught with what's coming, like double golden, it's very hard to defend. All of a sudden he's doing like three compositions now. He did spears, uh, he did spears, he did elite skirmisher, and now he's doing camel. So he invested into so many different kind of units here. And if there's one thing like about this game is that the more like the more amounts of different units you invest in, the the worse off you are than someone investing all his resources into like one or two units. Um, the only reason you'd want more units is because you need to get count units on the field. So in this case, the two camel transition was justified, but him wasting a lot of spears in the early uh, in the early castleage kind of just set him behind for no reason. So I have a pretty big lead here because of the amount of transitions he's been forced to do. And I'm using that lead to take a good you know, good fight in the front and also force him to idle his TC a lot. He can barely afford villagers so he's, because he's prioritizing camel from two stables, which I know they're cheaper, but not that much cheaper. And now I decide to just back off as my knights are doodling. But if I can take a good fight on the hill, I will. I'm Tatars, remember that. And so I'm just kind of keeping the pressure. But behind this, I'm adding eco as well. So I'm up on three TCs now, because you have to keep your eco running if you can't like all in and kill your opponent, always add economy. If you can all in and kill your opponent and do like significant damage with siege or a ton of knights, then go for it. But in this case, I didn't have the army to actually kill him. I have just a few crossbows and a few knights, just enough to hold the position and then add eco behind to transition into a good mid late game.
All right, so as you can see, my, my idle TC, way less than his, my economy, I'm up 10 bills. I make a big mistake here of running just right past through the camels. This is a big mistake. I should have done, but I should have done just hold the hill. If I hold the hill, he can never actually clear me because I have Tatars. But now I kind of take a bad trade and that's gonna cost me the map control and the momentum. And so that's actually a huge cleanup from him. What I do now is I just try to buy time with the Knights and I have to add more stables to remass at home. I make a mistake here, another mistake, believe it or not. I only add an extra range, extra stable. I should have also added a fourth stable. Not extra range, I don't think I need extra range. One range reduction, four stables. I can afford that very soon in like 10, in like, not 10 minutes, in like three minutes. I'm gonna have enough economy for that. So I should have added an extra stable. I stay on three stables for way too long and it results in me floating resources and not being able to spend it, uh, which is definitely not the situation I wanna be in. Uh, oh, I actually added a range. Sorry, I added a second range. Oh, that's a mistake. I don't think I needed a second range. I think my thought process was to have a second range against the camels. Maybe that was good. Um, I don't think I needed that though. I think if I just add more stables would, and go camels myself, that's probably a better situation. So I'm kind of rethinking some of my decisions here. I think had I just went for like four stables, like add two more and then go camels with a few crossbows behind, that's probably perfect because his skirms won't do too much against my camels anyways. I just have to add a second range. Not terrible choice, but I'm kind of second guessing it now. Um, Cause yeah, crossbows, I'm, I'm never gonna get a good massive crossbows anyway. So I might as well just produce them from one range, that's fine. And just slowly kind of mass them up. But either way, I end up getting some decent fights here, cleaning it up and I'm 20 bills up almost. So that's like insane situation to be in. He's up on three TC, but it's simply too late. I'm adding a fourth. I've got 20 bills extra. And now the big thing here is I cannot greed for Imperial Age. The reason is I've got forward gold, I've got multiple hills on the front. I have to continue committing to Castle Age because if I simply go to Imperial Age, I'm gonna get overwhelmed in Castle Age and that's a fact. So I just have to continue investing into Castle Age. And again, same mistake, I need to add more stables. I add only an extra one, that's the third stable I add. But I needed way more than that. And now look, I'm, like, I'm barely producing from both ranges, so... I don't even think the second range was needed, honestly. I think just one range is fine, add stables from before and switch the camels, which I'm only now doing. Which I think that's a good, that's a good move here. All right, so now we're seeing Casbo mining some stone. That's definitely very good. Uh, it's gonna give him a good advantage with, um, you know, with regards to a castle. So either securing his hill here or going forward. We'll see what he decides to do. Obviously I know what he decides to do, uh, but he's continuing to attack here with camels and knights. I'm only now switching to camels and I'm missing the second armor and the second attack, so my camels are quite weak, but I decided to only fight when he wants to fight near me, and I just micro my crossbows to hit the camels and run while dodging the skirm fire. So my micro is pretty good in these fights, just using the crossbows to hit and run. Um, and his skirms are kind of useless, like they're barely hitting my crossbows in the back, and then they just die every time there's a fight that goes my way. So um, yeah, I should definitely go like four stables and just put the pressure on. A comment in the chat, four stables with 15 on gold. The thing is, it's not necessarily about having the ability to afford constant production. It's really about having the ability of getting like a couple extra units on the field when I need them. And then once my economy grows, I have the extra production buildings. I stay on three stables for way too long here and it's definitely not the best choice. Pretty bad fight from, he from me here. Fighting, I'm downhill here. That's a terrible fight. I'm surprised I took it for that long. I needed to back up way earlier. Um, but I'm doing camels now, which I think is definitely a good choice. I'm gonna get plus two here in a second as well. All right. And then meanwhile, I've had four TC running with, with minimal idle TC. So my economy is like fantastic. There's no question about that. Uh, but I could definitely be doing a little bit more on the military side. And like, as you can see now, like I'm not even constantly producing from three, from three stables. I'm like barely producing. I'll do one round and I can't afford them. So maybe the fourth stable didn't need to go down that early. Like for sure there's some merit in that. But like at some point I do float resources. So I needed extra stables at some point for sure. And there's no doubt in my mind. Maybe I'm overhyping it. Maybe I didn't need them for now. But at this point I definitely need them. And as far as fixing my eco, I can just expand for the other golds. Um, because this new Arabia makes the third gold further. So all I have to do is expand a little bit faster to get to, the, to, get to them. But I know for sure that I need an extra stable here because in all in castle age situation, uh, you need to have good production to maintain uh, a military presence on the field. He decides to all in now to get his forward castle. Notice I continued making expos throughout the entire game as well. 
Uh, very good to make use of this, the free thumb ring and the crossbows to counter the camels. Uh, keep the double gold composition against Byzantine. And I, I want to pause here for a second. So I said before in the theory, and I still stand by it, that the Tars are bad in full casted situations because they don't actually have a consistent eco bonus. And I still stand by that. I don't have a military bonus now because you know, I'm just using generic camels and generic crossbows, the free thumb ring that, you know, it's still in the background, but that spike of free thumb ring is kind of past at this point. Uh, and other civs can get thumb ring at this point, no problem as well. So if Tatars ideally want to go up to Imperial Age and they want to play Cav Archers, but you can't always make your ideal unit in games, especially games like this where you have a forward gold and you're not fully walled and it's very hyper aggressive with a lot of units. I can't just go to Imperial Age. So I agree, Tatar have really good like early input, free departing tactics, great Cav Archers, great Imperial Age in general. But I can't skip there. I just have to fully commit in Castle Age, and that's actually the reason I'm able to take proper fights here and win the game. I fight on the hill with the camels. My crossbows are kind of in the middle of nowhere, but I'm just trying to run away from the skirms and get shots off in the background as well. I use my camels to target his camels because I don't want to fight his villagers. I want to kill his army firstly, and I definitely do a decent job in that. But he does a good job of picking off my crossbows here. So I have only five of those. Still though, with those five on the hill, it's definitely decent doing good damage from the back end of things and I end up actually winning this fight but like i said should i had like an extra two or three stables i can definitely dominate this fight way more like only three stables is way too little there had i had an extra two which i had the resources with the, the wood there extra two um stables i can even sell stone i can sell woods so i can definitely afford to pump out units from five stables and it would have made me stomp this fight whereas in reality i just like kind of barely won it Still good enough, but definitely something to learn from. Extra stables, I can afford it, it's just an extra few hundred woods, and it would make my life a lot easier to get an extra two units out fast in these kind of fights. At this point, it's pretty much GG. He loses his castle on the front, I get a defensive castle here. But there's still some stuff to learn from the game, so I'm not gonna fast forward just yet. I'm gonna balance my economy, I'm missing a lot of gold. I continue making units for the time being though, because I need to make sure my castle comes forward. Once I get my castle down, then I can relax. Kazma now has a few options. You can literally go for like, I don't know, Pikeman transition, because I have camels out. You can try to go for fast imp. None of his options are good. He's down so many vills, so he's got like no good plays. But he can try his best to come back in the game. I add three ranges, because I figure I can go skirm. I even get at least skirmisher upgrade. I figured skirm could be good, because I expect him to go pikes. But you'll see, I kind of go in between like a bunch of different unit compositions. I don't fight there, because He's on the hill, I'm not going to make the same mistake I made earlier. And I'm 140 feels, like I'm chilling, it's like completely perfect situation for me. I want us to get the imp, I sell my stone, <laughs> and again I'm kind of just slow to expanding, I expand now to the gold. Should have done this earlier, I'm actually lacking a lot of gold now, only 6 here. Main gold, I used the villas to go make the castle, so I'm, I'm missing a lot of gold here and I just had to sell stone to compensate. The wood price at this point, the wood and food price is terrible, so I can't really rely on that too much. You can see here just how bad that is. So I can't rely too much on the market uh, with those two easy to get resources. And it's at this position we have to decide, do I go camel skirmisher as a composition or do I go heavy CA Hussar? I decided to go heavy CA Hussar for the simple reason that camel skirm is not the best at putting pressure and gaining map control. It's a really passive composition because camels are not getting its buildings, skirmishers are not good to push, and it's really just like a kind of a counter unit. But like, what am I really countering? I'm the guy that should be pushing because I'm the guy who's ahead. So I decided to just, I figured I have enough time. I'm gonna go for the best Tatar composition which is Heavy CA and Hisar with the unique tech, and I figured I have the time to go for that. The one restriction I have is that I'm missing gold. I actually didn't scout this gold. Would have been nice to know, eh? Would have been nice to know that that, that gold exists. Wait, is this Gaia? Oh, I don't want to see Gaia. It's my fog of war. I didn't know that that gold existed. It's right there, in fact. Uh, however, I decided to go Heavy CA and Hisar, and I trade my camels just before hitting Imp because I want to prevent him from having the camels. I've decided I don't want to upgrade them myself, so I go for a pretty like suboptimal trade in theory, but the fact is I don't want to upgrade the unit, and I want to make sure that he can't upgrade the unit, so I just trade the camels off and make that tech switch into Heavy Sea Hissar. I have a ton of farms. It's going to be super easy for me to pump out those Light Cav, pump out those Hussar, and Cav Archers is just the best Tatar late game unit to have in the back rank as a DPS unit. So 
we went through a ton of different compositions in Castle Age, but what's true is that I made use of the free thumb ring with the with the crossbows in Castle, and I'm now making use of the free parsing tactic by going imp by transitioning into coward just before hitting imp. And I'm also making use of the unique tech, which I already have, by the way, giving the light cab and the cab archers extra pierce armor. So I've made use of so many different Tatar options here. And the one big thing that I didn't manage to make use of is camp the hill in the mid game with Tatars. Had I done that, it would have been a, like a way smoother game. I missed out on that. I obviously made a big mistake there. But had I made use of that, it would have been fantastic. I didn't, and it cost me a little bit, but I still made use of enough Tatar bonuses to have a great game here. And I decided to pump out some trebs to, per to pressure the castle. And as always, guys, it's one gold unit, Cab Archer, one food unit, the Hussar, and one tre uh, siege unit, and in this case, the treb. That's a late game composition. One gold unit, one food unit, one siege unit. 90, 95% of games, you can do that. 95% of games in Imperial Age, you can do that and have success. It could be Halberdier Arbalest, Treb. It could be Halberdier Arbalest, Bomber Cannon. It could be Halb, Siege, like Halb, Onager. Uh, and I don't know, Arblast or Halb Oranger and Paladin, like, whatever composition you can figure out or you can go for, one gold unit, one food unit, and um, and one siege unit, and you have great success with that composition. It's going to be a, a very complete composition, most likely. All right, so now Hussar is just to gain map control and raid is my strategy. Uh, Hussar, you guys know me, I'm a fanatic. I obviously love the units um, too much at times. But it's just like the best late game unit because you don't care if it dies. You just spam it, you get good control, I can afford to do this all day. I keep my opponent pinned, and while my opponent's pinned, what am I doing? I'm looking to take golds, uh, obviously he denied this. Um, I'm looking to trap his castles down. And I'm looking to kind of raid him on the side if he ever opens up. And at this point there's a pause? Okay, not sure what that was. Capture rage, hello, okay. Uh, and yeah, I'm just kind of forcing him to chase and making plays on the front. And the best part for me about the Hussar is just how replaceable they are. Like you literally can just make 10, uh, 10 stables and just spam them. You can't say the same for Cavalier. Cavalier costs a lot of gold, so you can't actually waste them. But Cavalier are good in other situations. In this case, Hussar flood the map, force them to fight. I'm close to 200 pop. He's still struggling to get the 200 pop. Uh, I'm 189, he's 135. So the more fights I take at this point, the better it is. I keep him at a lower pop. And then I'm just going to go ahead and force the issue here. Playing very reckless with the Cab Archers, but just because I know I can. I know he's so far behind. Um, and really just trying to poke at any area. And he's doing a good job of keeping himself up. I haven't gone to his main base with any Hisaurus, but at the same time, he can never expand. Because as soon as he expands, I'm going to be right there on his ass with Hisaurus. So, yeah, I can't like do damage to his economy necessarily, but I can force him to stay turtled up and not expand, and that's damage in and of itself. So, I take advantage of the fact that he's got no murder holes. Murder holes best upgrade. We were right when we were kids, chat. Um, yeah, Hussars just diving, Cab Archers to do the DPS, and then the Trebs in the back. And it's game over with a very nice Tatar game, and we can zoom out here because of the beautiful capture rate and see the entire map here. Um, wonderful game. Wonderful game. I did a lot of mistakes. He did a lot of mistakes. I did some things right, but in the end, Hussars and game is over. GG, and yeah, it was a very nice one. Just to quickly recap here, made use of the free thumb ring, made use of the parsing tactics, um, you know, tried to get to my late game composition that's the best, Hussar Cab Archers, was willing to play Camel Skirm if needed, decided it wasn't, and as far as the Siege Unit, usually the Treb is the best with the Tars because you don't get Bomber Cannon, but you do get Siege Ram as a decent option as well. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Let's go ahead and take a look at, this, at the statistics before I end the video. And yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. And we're almost done with what we're doing one episode a week. We don't have the pro, pro version. Subscribe so I get the pro version, guys. All right, take care and bye for now.